I uh, got some great audio of Bill Maher during one of his shows recently. Uh, he, he kicked someone out of his audience for yelling and screaming, but he did it himself. Bill Maher is one of these people. I'm sure you have uh, these people in your lives. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't like the guy. I hate him. And He's I don't not even, a likable guy. And I don't even know why. Because if someone would sit down and go, so why do you, why do you hate Bill Maher? I, 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 there's not one reason. He's one of these guys I mean, that we doesn't go back come across when we first, as likable. Well, we do go back to when we first started in radio, and we were very green, and we were out there in L.A. well over 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And we were interview, uh, interviewing Bill Maher when he was just on Comedy Central, and... Uh, and he could tell that we were kind of new to this, and he pointed it out and made us really uncomfortable, and not even in an entertaining way, just in a, yeah. I'm so much better than you guys way. And we never forgot that. But uh, I don't think I liked Bill Maher before that, and I certainly don't like him since then. No. But I, I can't put my finger on it. He's just not a likable guy. It's this pompous thing that he's got going. I think it's this, uh, no matter what he says, he's right, especially on his show. Other people bring up valid points, and he just uh, mocks them. Uh, it's a I'm better than you kind of thing. And he just, like I said, isn't likable. He doesn't come across as a likable guy. I think he's a funny stand-up and he's smug, and that's the problem. It's unfortunate. Smug. Smug. He comes off as very smug, and nobody likes anybody who's smug. Yeah. Uh, the KKK omelet, yes. Uh, Tyson from uh, oh, really? Washington. Whites oh. only. Uh, egg whites only, yeah. Oh, egg whites only. Okay. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he wrote whites only, but I had to help him out. Yeah. Ooh. Egg whites only would be very, very fun. I didn't get it till you said egg. I know, but he wrote whites only. I was going to ask for the address. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So Bill Maher is just in the middle of his show, and this is how it went down. H and CDC, we'd be able to attack this very bad disease that's attacking. <laughs> we'd be able to attack it. <laughs> so I think it's about domestic uh, priorities, and I think we need to get the CDC working. We need to get the NIH working. Take that money from Iraq, put it here, and begin to fight that disease so people can live. See, this is this is uh, this is part of the Democrats. I'm from New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> what was he heckling there? I, I'm trying to figure it out. Does anyone, anyone know, know what he was saying? Like, man, you know what he was saying there? Or, or what? God forbid, the news actually reports. Um, what he was saying, or no? I know one guy was talking about Building Seven. That's a, is it the same? Oh my no, God! I think he ended up kicking out like two or three people, right? Yeah, I think there were there was like a group of people that were there protesting what he said about the uh, about the trade centers not being blown up by President Bush. Or oh, enough with the blowing up of the trade center! Here's we what, explain this all the time. Nine <sighs> eleven conspiracy does. theorists. Here's what you are. You, I, I understand that you want to have an, an intriguing story. Mm -hmm. Your little spoiled children who want to rebel against mother and father's view mm -hmm. of things, and you so desperately want to mean something. You want to connect yeah. yourself to the event. You're spoiled children. Bingo. And, and you're wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. Completely. We just talked about this last week because they did another building demolition. Yeah, they blew up the sands over there in uh, Atlantic City. And what City. they have to do... To, for uh, for a controlled explosion is ridiculous. No one could no one could live through that and work they, on a daily basis without seeing anything. They just never look at that. The, these idiots, these spoiled children, as Jimmy put it, they never look at what it takes to blow up a building. They just look at pictures that are taken from certain angles or cropped or this that. They they look at what they what uh, uh, validates what they're saying. Sure. Anything else, they throw away. Oh, that's uh, the government uh, made that up. They did that. And they talk about how the security was taken off of the Trade Center uh, for uh, a, a week before. the thing. They bring up all these little things, not, not mentioning the fact that a building has to be stripped. You must tear the walls down to get to the structures to drill holes and put explosives in them. It's, it's not something you could do uh, in secret while people are working. And on one of the 9-11 videos that the spoiled children made where they're saying that it was so conspiracy, one of them actually used the line, the such and such division who was supposed to protect airspace was told to stand down. Yeah. He not only... I was embarrassed for him. Like I wasn't even angry. I'm like, you directly stole a line from Donald Sutherland in JFK, you spoiled child. Right, right. 
Donald Sutherland said so and so, which Donald Sutherland, by the way, that character in, in JFK did not exist. It was mm -hmm. based on a couple of people. Right. Uh, some is saying Purdy and somebody else combined to make one point. But that, that, nev that scene never happened. Yeah. Uh, just spoiled children. He directly stole the, lo the, the line from the movie. He was told to stand down. Stand down. So in this day and age, Shut the way information has passed, someone knew that the attacks were coming and said to the military, stand down. <laughs> and they said, okay. And then they never piped up about it. Yeah. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> Little ch I, I, it's the people who attack the Warren Commission as being liars. Do you know how many people you have to get involved with all of them to lie? Yeah, that's what the whole thing about a huge conspiracy is. It's just uh, too many people that would have to be involved that people can't keep their mouths shut about anything. Yeah, especially the people that are, you know, the people dying of cancer or something. That On their way out, they'd be like, all right, look, this is what I got. Yeah, here it is. But you never get that guy. Uh, Phil, New York, what's up? Yes, this is Philip Oliver Hole, and I, I know what Bill Maher says is correct. There's too many people Hold involved. on, joke name. What'd you say, Phil, what? Philip Oliver Hall. I'm a friend of Barry McCockiner. Oh, oh, you God! Can't, you can't even let him talk, dude. Phil, you got you got to just cut him off without a word. Just stop with the wacky name. Phil, why, are you, why are you doing wacky name humor? Really? No, really. I'm just having fun, boys. Well, Phil, about. you know what? Why don't you just fun. go talk to my friend? Patio furniture. <laughs> That's he's, funny. Uh, he's an <laughs> Irish boy. Irish guy, but then it could just be that it's a, a lounge chair on your patio. No, it's not. I don't have oh. patio. It's my friend, oh, okay. Patio Furniture. Oh, sorry. I thought it was a joke. No, I've introduced you to Patio. He's a big fan of the show. He always yells, love you, love the show. Hey. Then he falls asleep <laughs> under a closed umbrella behind my house. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I knew I was going nowhere with that. I figured I wanted to just scare myself into a brick wall so I didn't bomb it slowly. <laughs> uh, Jared in Boston, what's yeah. up? Hey, boys. Hey, Hope, I got a uh, menu item for your terrorist restaurant there. Okay. The uh, Tel Aviv Bus Bomber Burrito. Ooh, like uh, what's wrong with that? Uh, it's too long. I kind of like it. No, a, a bus bomber burrito is fine, not Tel Aviv. We know where they happen. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I thought you meant the, uh, the the Madison Avenue line that Ralph Cramden drove. <laughs> I would have to disagree, though. You're in a restaurant in America, and also they have like uh, the Philly cheesesteak on the menu there. You, you know, they like to localize stuff. So I, I think I'm with them still on the Tel Aviv. Too long. Bus bomb burrito. Oh, this was a, a controversial uh, on line six. That was a very controversial remark from um, sure. uh, Bill Maher. Hey, John, you're on the air, John. Hey, boys, love you, love the show. Wank, wank, thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, what about the time Bill Moore said, uh, you know, that our troops are cowards because they attacked for miles and miles he, away? I don't think he did. The guys who, who were uh, involved in the 9-11 attacks were, the, uh, were brave and uh, heroic. What he, was, well, he didn't say they were heroes, that. dude. What, what he said was kind of stupid, and it eventually cost him his show. Mm. But I think he was just saying, I, in a way, I think he was just saying how the word, and again, I'm, I'm kind of shouldn't be speaking for him, but it sounded to me like he was just saying how we throw that word around, like, He's like, you know, it's like you talk to the guys cowards. They flew planes into buildings. It's like as much as you hate their guts. Yeah, yeah. I always, I always hate when they brand them as cowards. Yeah, it's, it's always the cowardly act. It's like, well, no. cowardly is the the idea that uh, a bunch of innocent people were killed. Yeah. That's kind of cowardly. Instead of going against people that can uh, have the ability to kick your ass. Like taking on an army head to head, right? Uh, that's brave. That's uh, you know, you gotta have a lot of balls to do that. That's the only cowardly part. The idea of of stepping onto an aircraft, knowing you're going to take the controls and fly it into a uh, a building. The idea cowardly doesn't come up. Uh, a son of a bitch, bastard. Uh, wor worse words I can't use here. Uh, yeah, but cowardly? I don't know, man. I sure as hell couldn't do it for, for anything I believed in. See, the problem with words like that, what annoys me about them, is it, it kind of makes you look at the enemy incorrectly. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you like them, of course you don't like them, they're animals. <laughs> whether you, you like, like them or not, but I'm saying, that's like, Muhammad Atta. <laughs> you can't, like, you can't be, it's like they are, they are vicious, mm -hmm. tough fighters, and we declared a victory in a war and are still in there because the dummies who throw this lingo around uh, yeah, you know, they're just, they're cowards, and they, they support terror. And instead of going in there and just bombing horribly, mm -hmm. which is all you have to do, we went in there and slowly tried to politely kill these guys. I know. It, it's annoying that this stupid, this language is thrown around, mm -hmm. and it kind of takes away how vicious they are. Yeah, it's the politeness of this war that's just...
stinks. Ridiculous. We have to take a break. Uh, well, we didn't even really get into the Bill Maher audio. We'll, we'll do it after Ooh, the yeah. break. Want Bill Maher that. throwing uh, one of his, a protester out of his uh, show live on TV, I guess. Was it live or were they taping? I don't know. It's live. It yeah, was live. live. Yep. Thank so you, So all Sam. those curses went over the air? Yeah. It was oh, like, boy, there's got to be an FCC fine. It was the HBO. It's also. HBO. Damn. Why do you say CBS, though, in one of the clips? I must be a CBS studio. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Because mm. that confused me. He did say CBS. He did, right? Yeah. There's something in CBS. I'm like, oh, boy, there's a fine in their future. <laughs> Baby Than is saying they own it. Huh? All right. Fan is saying they own it. Maybe they own the studio. He did say CBS, and that's why. I thought, obviously, he's on HBO, but I'm like, what's yeah. CBS? What's that about? And then I'm like, did he do something special for CBS? Mm. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, all right, back to Bill Maher. So, protester starts in, and uh, Maher interrupts his show. Let's try to get to the end of this clip. H and CDC, we'd be able to attack this very bad disease that's attacking. <laughs> we'd be able to attack it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's about domestic uh, priorities, and I think we need to get the CDC working. We need to get the NIH working, take that money from Iraq, put it in here, and begin to fight that disease so people can live. See, this is, this is, uh, this is part of the Democrats. I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I even... Boy, sometimes here at CBS, I wish the sound wasn't working. Jersey is going. I didn't even know what that was saying. So you got a protester in the audience there. Yeah. I have no idea what he said. No one has a transcript, really, right? Some Something that mommy and daddy probably would listen to. So now he has to come up and jump up and down and kick and scream somewhere else to get attention. Yeah. Notice me. I'm an overprivileged suburban boy. And whining. He's even whining when he's yelling. And please don't be confused. I don't like Bill Maher, but so far handling it perfectly, he's like, yeah, whatever, and yeah. he continued on with his show. And then this is what happened. But, but you know, you're, see, this is the problem sometimes with government. Hey, do we have some security in this building? Or do I have to come over and kick this guy down? So it, it, it makes it look like Bill Maher, you know, personally, like, kicked the guy out of the uh, the audience. It, yeah. As he goes to this guy that's uh, protesting, there's already three or four really big guys around him. Oh, yeah. And so then brave Bill Maher is now going to help and be the hero today. Wow, you hear what Bill Maher did? He really didn't do much, except leave his post and go into the audience. And he could headbutt him and kill him with that huge forehead. He was like the fourth <laughs> or fifth guy in to, to kick out one protester. So, And then I guess there were more protesters in the audience. It continued. They won't chant Jerry for you, though? You know, is it that hard to throw somebody out of a building? Oh. I'll kick your ass out of here, too. What, a, what about what? What about Building 7, Bill? Oh, you mean the one that was hit by a huge piece of the World Trade Center and yes, fell down? That one. <laughs> dummies. All of a sudden. Oh, dummies. All these idiots are like, they're like a, a, a <clears throat> metal engineering experts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they know. Uh, you know, buildings never falling down. Like, yeah, well, a couple of jet planes have never hit them either. So amazing. throw everything else you knew out the window. Just what they reach for. and Yeah. They'd rather it be some big government conspiracy. That way they could fight the man than man. it just being what it was. They don't like the the idea that we get. It makes them feel safer in a way that the government had something to do with it because that's a controllable, tangible thing. Yep. The idea that we really did just get our asses kicked and we weren't looking is a really weird, helpless feeling. Yeah, yeah. And well, it's oh, a very, very small percentage that, that believe this crap. They're just childlike, and they're they're just dummies. They're phonies. And, and when they talk to you, it's like, no, look, I've seen the picture that you're showing me. You're showing me a cropped picture or a picture uh, that, that when they showed the other side of it, you could see that there are aircraft parts there. Because they always want to say, there was no sign of any airplane at the Pentagon. And then they show, like, a landing gear somewhere. It's like, well, what the hell was that? What were they saving that for? What was that, someone's paperweight over at the Pentagon? <laughs> Bunch of jackasses. Stop it. Then you got a, another one that piped in. I think there was a total of three. Bill, I, I, 
was only allowed two guests, so things should be okay after that. No, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. You have good friends. That was, that was not mine. Oh. Yeah, this is the problem with live television. I guess it gets around that if you're on live, then then the nutcase is, yeah, and you are a nutcase, Building 7. Exactly. You know, they're just douches. The more I read about the Kennedy assassination, which is what I, I hate to say it, but I'm turning around against the conspiracies. You just think it was Lee Harvey Oswald and with a lucky few shots. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm not convinced of that yet, but I'm so much more convinced of it than I've ever been. The more I've yeah. read, the technology has actually hurt the conspiracy theorists. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now there's uh, you could do all kinds of things with uh, lasers and uh, uh, actual. They used. Uh, did you see the one where they made a couple of ballistic dummies? And took a shot that was supposed to be exactly like the shot was taken. And the bullet really kind of did do what it was supposed to do. <laughs> it uh, the, the magic bullet. And they, uh, they, they're so, they're, like, they have the photos, right? They, they can, these conspiracy people always have these weird names for the little things in the photos. There's one photo taken from a weird angle. I think it's from the angle, not of the grassy knoll, but the other side. And there's a little figure in the in the back. They say it looks like a guy in a police uniform. It's a black figure, and, and the Kennedy people called him a uh, black dog man. Mm -hmm. He looked like a black dog. That was his name. And they did some kind of a a thing recently with a computer, and the guy showed how he mapped out Dealey Plaza. And he goes, "If that was really a man, by the scale, he's two feet tall." <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. And again, that doesn't prove anything. But just, midget I think conspiracy. What I'm they because they do know certain heights relative to that thing in the photo. They, they know how high... Well, I was there that day, and I did see uh, something from... <laughs> <laughs> but who better to use than a midget, if you think about it? No one would suspect no, a no midget. No one would suspect a midget. Ever. Right. He'd, everybody would just start laughing and pat him on the head, yeah. send him on his way. Even JFK would have waved the pistol because he would have thought like a little pow sign was coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the little circus thing. <laughs> Could have questioned him longer because Ruby's shot would have gone right over his head. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even aiming at Oswald. He was aiming at the midget in front of him and <laughs> Jack in Texas, what's up? Good morning, boys. How you doing? All right. Hey, uh, so I was at school last week, and uh, they had this 9-11, you know, investigate 911.com or whatever the heck it is. And uh, these guys were like, oh, the reason that the popular mechanics report was so, you know, wrong was because it's funded by the Hearst Corporation. And that was their their reason why. I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah, the popular mechanics uh, version of the whole thing was really good, concise. It had a, a lot of pictures to back things up and facts and interviews. And it just it puts to shame anything from loose change and all these conspiracy douches. We had the loose change guys on. It got to a point we couldn't talk to them anymore because it was so embarrassing. It wasn't even because they were making good points or anything. It was just so embarrassing that we couldn't have a serious conversation with them anymore. Well, it's like a little yeah. child arguing with his parents. It's like they'll never concede a point, which to me means somebody is, is so bent on proving their point. Like when I'm talking about like switching a little bit on this Kennedy stuff, it's because I've read so much about it. Yeah. I've never read a lot about it. And it's like when you weigh all the stuff, it's like, you know what? Ugh. This does kind of make sense this way. So if you think you have the power of your convictions, that just means that you're obsessed with one point of view yep. and you're not going to change it, as will most spoiled children. When yelling at mother and father, most spoiled children cross their arms and don't want to give an inch. Yeah. Well, the, the other interesting thing that I thought was uh, that they were doing was that Ron Paul is the one who's funding this. Who's Ron That's Paul? Who, he's... Some guy running for yeah, president. He's, he's one of the, <laughs> many that anyway, don't what is a chance? Have, boys. Later. I, I, I love Jack. to just hear quickly from Will from the Bronx oh, about the Pentagon. Uh, Will. Yeah. What's up? All right. What? What? Why don't you think the Pentagon was hit by a plane? Nah, I don't think. I know you guys are gonna like trash me about it, but this is what I believe. I'm not trying to change your minds, but all right. I don't think they hit by a plane because they didn't find the engines. They could have identified blood, but they can't find two engines. You know what I'm saying? No, th but they did find engine parts. There's pictures from the Pentagon with with turbine rotors. The engines came apart, but it it was hit by a plane. They have the outline of the actual plane where it went in. 
No, but the, the size of the turbine motor that you saw on the picture was way smaller than the than the plane that used to hit the Pentagon. Well, it was I, from the it was from the the turbine unit they used to power the plane when it's still sitting on the runway. Right, but well, can I ask a question, an honest question to Will? Like uh, maybe you believe that, but if, if if the conspiracy was this well thought out and this brilliant, and this with video cameras and all that stuff, why would they bring the wrong? turbine engine to leave there <laughs> like do you understand if they thought all of this stuff out and they somehow hid all these passengers why would they make such a basic error as to not have the right size engine on the plane that was supposed to be and found it, it knowing was, the NTSB was going to invest it was the it. right size engine but I'm saying I'm just asking him from his point yeah. of view how would that happen dude well, I don't know maybe I'm wrong well what about landing gear they found landing gear let me go real simple well where did that plane go I have no clue <laughs> I don't read up on that now now since you don't have uh, but since you don't have a clue about so much wouldn't the obvious answer make a lot more sense than this ridiculous conspiracy theory nah, to tell you the truth uh, the obvious answer would be the spoiled children thing I mean look at Charlie Sheen <laughs> uh, no, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. All right, thanks, Will. We got Vinny in Jersey. Vinny, go ahead. It's an instinct to not trust the government. I understand that. Vinny? Yeah. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, guys. Hey. Um, there, there was no way that a plane came into the Pentagon. There was a 700-foot overpass in a way. Dude, the guy didn't know what he was doing flying that plane. He threaded a needle and actually hit the building, uh, I think a lot more by luck than by the skill of his flying. By luck? The guy couldn't fly a plane. The guy hit, the guy, believe me, it's not that hard. He, he hit Have two lamp, he hit two lamp posts and a fence, which is documented that they were damaged. He, they hit the building on a bias. It was sort of on an angle. So the outline, people expect this outline to look like a, a, a Fred character. Flintstone running through the wall. Hold what? on, Vinny, Vinny, hold on. Wait, 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 one thing at a time. Yeah, it hit on, on an angle. So it's not going to be this perfect uh, silhouette of an airplane. 40 feet from the ground. Come Vinny, on, let man. me ask you a question again, according to your argument. If, if what you're saying is correct, and I had questions about it too, man. I really did. But why, if, like, if it's such an obvious and ridiculous impossibility... And th you have to be the brilliant men that would have set this conspiracy up. Why would they... Hold on, dude, dude. One thing at a time. Why would these brilliant men have made such basic, idiotic errors in this conspiracy? <laughs> you guys need to do more research. That's you see what I'm saying? Back. I'm asking you a very basic question. Why would they send... If, if the whole thing was a fix... Why wouldn't they have drove it head down into the Pentagon where it never would have been questioned how it came in? <laughs> well, what do you think? Coming how, in from an angle. People, dude, you're not answering people my People end up laughing when they feel uncomfortable yeah. with their yeah. side of an argument. Uh, dude, so, so Vinny, glib. instead of laughing, what, did, what do you think happened to the Pentagon? What do I think happened to yeah. the yeah. Pentagon? There was a nuclear explosion that happened in the middle of it. Oh, you sweet. A nuclear explosion? <laughs> yeah. He's kidding. All right, yeah, of course you are. Government. All right, Vinny, I know. Fruncus. You had to go for a I'll joke because you, you, you got guys. uncomfortable. And a fruncus. All right, goodbye. To you too, sir. Goodbye. I hope he was kidding. Uh, uh, more, really? Was dumb. More from Bill Maher. Two more clips. So then uh, I guess he kicked out the third protester. You know what that's all about? Of all the things I've said, and believe me, I've said a lot of things, as you all know, that could get my head on a block. The one that they protest about out here is the people who think that the World Trade Center oh. was a controlled explosion. Yeah, you yeah. see, in that instance, I'm actually defending President Bush. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think President Bush brought down the World Trade Center. <laughs> Uh, there's a ghost in the audience. <laughs> wow. Boo. Boo. Oh. Boo. <laughs> what an ass. Bob Edwards. <laughs> I don't think President Bush brought down the World Trade Center. <laughs> Owls disagree with me. <laughs> oh, he's a... You went what? with an owl? Uh, That's a ghost. What an ass. Oh. Uh, we got some what about? Uh, Chris on Long Island. Yes, Chris. What about what? Hey, what's up, guys? I just wanted to know, the, uh, what do you think about the flight 
uh, I'm not sure the, the Fright 93 or whatever with the guys, let's roll. You got to admit that that's a conspiracy. How is that a conspiracy? You, you don't think that play was shot down by uh, the fighters? I honestly don't know on that one. That, know who knows? I who really knows? don't know, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, they could they have gone into a panic and and made a decision that it's we got to get this plane out of the air. And then, but, who knows? But you know, I'll Rumsfeld had that slip where he said uh, the plane we shot down. Yeah. So. But I'll tell you one thing: if a plane gets shot down, uh, it's going to rain down in a lot more pieces than making a canyon-like crater in the ground. That thing hit in one piece. Uh, I think if it was shot down in the air, it would have come apart. Huh? What? They they have a uh, nine one one call from people in uh, Shanksville uh, that called up reporting seeing a uh, low flying aircraft, like maybe a couple hundred feet off the ground, and it was never it could never have been explained. Right around the time that that plane was shot down, and well, all other planes were grounded. Well, dude, aren't you sure? That, aren't you aren't you are you positive that wasn't the low flying aircraft? <laughs> yeah, the one that crashed. No, 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 the no. Dude, there were there were military aircraft in the air at that point, and they said they did get to that area, but they got there late. And if it was shot down, how is that a conspiracy? Like that means uh, that they they oh, shot the it. Government tried to cover it up and try to make these guys look like heroes. I mean, okay, okay, well, dude. Well, maybe after the fact they decided to make these guys look like heroes. I wouldn't put it past the government. I I think they have it in their in their power to like shoot down we'll, a commercial aircraft. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and dude, hold on. There is audio of those guys getting into the cockpit. There's audio of it. Right. Let's roll. Yeah. I, was her and they made cell phone calls. You can't. Are you ever try making a cell phone? Oh, call? dude. Yeah, the old cell phone call. It's a bit. Like five of them from that one airplane. They were they low made, by the time they made the call. Yeah, you 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 can make a call from a, a plane if you're low enough. Uh, I think one of the stewardesses made a call from one of the on board planes. She did. So it wasn't even a, a, a cell phone. She was on the first flight. There's always yeah. There's there's just always. Uh, this yeah, easier well, answers. That, uh, that the government blew up the World Trade Center, but there's a lot of things that they lied about. Like they found a pass, they found one of the terrorist passports a couple blocks away from the World Trade Center, and that's how they knew who one of the terrorists was. But that's a piece of paper, and they couldn't. The black box was completely destroyed. How did they find somebody's passport? Well, something could have blown up, even though you're probably right. Wait, where are you calling from, Chris? Weren't you around when that all happened? You see all the paper that was just flying all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, but a t uh, the passport from the terrorist that was actually in the airplane? It could happen. It could happen. Likely. You see the stuff that ended up flying around? I mean, I'll that, tell you that what. stuff was floating around for days. I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. It's more likely that they find a passport from a terrorist than any of this conspiracy stuff is. Why are you so quick to go, and they found a passport? Well, that couldn't happen. But a cruise missile could be fired with no one knowing and have it hit the... You know, he's willing to throw out that ridiculous theory that uh, a passport could be found in, in some wreckage, but you're, you're willing to accept this drivel <laughs> about a huge conspiracy. And this is the beautiful thing. Let me ask you a conspiracy question, yeah. honestly. If they, wanted yeah. to, if they wanted to blow up the World Trade Center, like, and they knew they could do it, and they pulled off... I'm not saying that they, they did it. I'm not saying, okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, they wanted to, and they were going to hide all these people on these planes. Do all, Why wouldn't they just do it simple... And somehow bypass security and bring in trucks full of, of, of massive explosions and properly blow up those buildings from the ground. See, in 93, they wanted to knock out a support column and tip one building into the other. So if this government is this brilliant that they can fake these planes and the yeah, pent... Hold, dude. They probably could have prevented it. Dude, why... Why then? The economy boosts. Oh, stop it. Dude. The dollar's at a low. What are you talking about? Dude, the dollar's, we're equal with Canada. There's no and, and economy boost. dollar's at a low. Oil's almost $90 a barrel. It's, it's the highest it's ever been, I think, or close to it. And who's getting money from it? Not us. Exactly. What do you think? It's it's friggin' 1930, and the United States is pumping out oil uh, out of Texas. It, it's it's the Saudis and 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 the Middle Eastern countries that are making all the money. It's OPEC, uh, Venezuela. They're all making the money, not us. So, dude, why did, you didn't answer my question? Is he still there? Yeah. Well, I just yeah. simple, simple one thing. Why would the government or whoever did it go through all of that trouble with all of the things that could have gone wrong? Yeah, but See, I'm not even saying that, that they blew up the, uh, the towers. But you're saying I'm that it's a saying, conspiracy for the other. What do you? There's a lot of there's a lot of iffy, iffy things about it. I'll tell you that. A lot of iffy yeah, there's things. a few questions I had. 
like they will be with any any anything, any case. But why wouldn't they just, for any conspiracy person, bring in truckloads of explosives? You, this way, you don't have to gut the building. You don't have to plant. Apparently, they plant the explosives on every floor. Right. And why not just bring in? <laughs> giant truckloads and then you're controlling a few security people and a few security cameras instead of four different aircraft yeah it, it's monumentally idiotic what they're saying it's a lot of people that believe it they'll leave these phones. oh it's ridiculous uh, thanks chris we got to move on to andrew in new hampshire andrew what's up um i just have to say about the pentagon i think it's like bullshit because oh well, you can't well, curse andrew uh, well you're gonna lose your point just say uh yeah you think it's BS? Think it's ahead. Because they didn't find any bodies. Like, where are the bodies? They might Jeez. have found uh, bodies that pulverized into a uh, into a no, brick every, wall. Okay, there was a plane that crashed like three weeks ago in Spain or something like that, and like forty <laughs> people or something like that survived, and they didn't find one body. Dude, not even dude, any it was a land. It was a landing in bad weather, and they kind of overshot a runway. It's a little different than doing about 500 miles an hour into a brick building. With a full you get the, you know what an airplane is real, realistically? If you scaled it down to uh, the size of uh, a football, tin foil. It would feel like tin foil in your hands. And people are like little grapes. And, and, and with it smashing into a wall that fast, you get pulverized. Completely pulverized well, you're gone was, uh, part you of the disappear this guy was part of the rescue team at the pentagon craig in dc what's up hey what's up good show hey um yeah i hear all these people calling and if they would just talk to some of the rescue workers that were actually there because we i was actually inside the building after it happened and, and the, that front side of the pentagon was just renovated they just finished con construction we were given the blueprints right away so we could do our search effort with inside we found plane parts all over the place, and, and I don't want to get into the you know the body parts and that sort of thing, whether they're people in the Pentagon or, or on the plane. But you know, if, if people would actually take the time instead of listening to all these other BS artists out there talking about this conspiracy, and it's just like the FDNY guys up there doing their job on the rescue site. You know, down here at Pentagon, we were inside as well, and we saw all the plane parts. The yeah, you know, the same rim that matches the, the type of plane. I mean, it matches all up. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. they've had the landing gear uh, hub that matched the plane that the, that crashed into the building. And you saw body parts, same but then, of course, the argument is well, they're bodies that are people that got killed inside the building when, yeah. when when the explosion happened, whatever it was caused by. I just don't But you saw body parts, right, sir? I mean, there were body parts inside because the, the, the Pentagon has the rings. There were a little, little bit of body parts where the plane and all the stuff finally stopped, you know. And, and the front of it was re, redone to uh, resist, like, car bombs, that sort of thing in the future. So a lot of the blast windows, people were saying, well, why didn't the windows break? Well, a lot of it was just put in there brand new to resist car bombs, that sort of thing. And, and all the fuel going down the hallways and, and frying, you know, a lot of the workers there, you know, it's just a shame. I, and then people just sit there and want to say the government went through this whole thing. Yeah. And as you pull up, you can see the path of the plane taking all the light poles. Mm -hmm. And the FBI, they're walking through, picking up all the parts off the grass so we could set up our tents and do all of our work. So, I mean, this is just crazy. But for them, to, for them to have pulled off the Pentagon, like, why would they fake that if it's obviously such a questionable move? There's so many easier ways to do it. Like, if they just would have tipped the plane differently and smashed into the top of the Pentagon, which yeah. would have been a better strategical move, why not just do that? And this way, nobody questions it. It's, it's silly. It's such elaborate hoax because there is no traffic right in the D.C. area at, you know, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. So, I mean, you know, you know. It's crazy. I know. Like, they think that there's no witnesses to the plane going. People saw the plane coming. Yeah. And they think that they're going to fire a missile, and no one's going to notice that it was a missile. Yeah. <gasps> All right. Hey, Craig, thank you so hey, much. Richard, thanks. And, and the, the biggest thing is why. Why was it done? Oh, to get into a war with Iraq. Well, we already had reason to go to war with Iraq. There was a reason already. Uh, oh, to uh, send people into Afghanistan. There was a reason for that, too. Osama bin Laden was already, you know, uh, number one on the list uh -huh. because of things like the uh, the coal and uh, embassy bombings. Uh, they're, they're, we didn't need this monumental reason to get into a war. Uh, why? Why was it done? And people don't want the war. It's like that's the funny thing. It's like even when we were, by the time the U.S. went into Iraq, people were people were annoyed the U.S. was going into Afghanistan. 
yeah. who was hosting Bin Laden. By the time the U.S. went into Iraq, most of the country was against it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Or a lot of the country was. So it's like, what was the point? To get us into a war that the people didn't want anyway? I'll give you that that was a big BS story. Yeah, of course. The whole thing that, uh, Terrible. that little tap dance show that Colin Powell put on at the U.N. You know, that was a bunch of crap. He never uh, recovered from that, it no. seems. No, he's done. Yeah. Hey, uh, we got to get this last clip in before the break. So then the, the Bill Maher thing uh, ends with this. I have some good news to report. <laughs> One of our generals this week said that we have now eliminated al-Qaeda in Iraq, who, by the way, by the name now, AQI. I love it. Well, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's like KFC, you know. AQI. We don't make the bombs that kill the troops. We, we make the hate that makes the bombs. Uh, How come I don't fire my audience department? It's really the question that's running through my mind. Right? Yeah, don't be gentle with them. Ass kicking is what's called for. Well, if this was a microcosm of America, I'd vote for Rudy Giuliani at this point. No. All right, Ben in Jersey, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? I just want to say thank you so much for uh, talking about this finally. I think these uh, conspiracy theory people need to be slapped with some reality. Uh, there's this big slogan, uh, you know, when has fire ever melted steel? <laughs> yeah. Um, these people, uh, I guess they, they don't remember that uh, this isn't just a regular fire. you got two, you know, gigantic planes rocking into these buildings, and that'll definitely take a building down. Filled with fuel, by the way. Yeah, filled with fuel. I mean, they, they, these people, they picked long flights, so they knew that these were giant bombs. And I think it's ridiculous. People see this documentary, Loose Change, and all of a sudden they're uh, FAA hey, agents hey, themselves. Hey, Ben, this isn't the first time. We've been on this for a while, and we actually we humored the Loose Change guys. We had them on our show, and it was embarrassing. We had to like just end the whole thing because it, it, it wasn't even an argument anymore how how stupid they were looking because, on our yeah. show. Because the thing is— And then they know what they do with this Loose Change thing that needs to bring uh, be brought up. They constantly re-edit their whole uh, masterpiece. Yeah. Is the, yeah, yeah. Every time you do go Another over there, it's a, it's a whole different version that kind of leaves out things that have been proven wrong. And Yeah, that's what they do. They change it. Uh oh. Uh, oh, well, they're on to us oh, on this, and this. We didn't have enough research on this, so uh, we got to like get this out of the, uh, the loose change thing. Yeah, and, and it's such a it's such a low budget show, I guess that I mean they couldn't even get a real like uh, voiceover talent to narrate. It sounds like what? No, it, it sounds like a, the whiny idiot he is. No, well, for some yeah, reason. I, for some reason, though, this thing got legs. I don't know. There's a lot of people that... Uh, internet. The internet. This, and then I understand. There's, a, there's more people on the lines here that, that, that think, uh, you know, that... Having questions is one thing. I we had took down the towers ourselves. But nobody is able to just give me any type of an answer that I think is, is just not stupid. I'm willing to know. listen. I ask questions. I'm the one that raised this. Uh, we were talking about the loose change guys. I was asking questions on the show. Anthony was, was saying, uh, uh, like, you know, technically what was probably happening. And uh, we finally brought the guys on. Shane and Philly, what's up? What's going on, guys? Hey. Hello, hey, Shane. Listen, I, was listening, I was listening to everything earlier, and uh, you guys are putting up some really good points, but the callers that you had in discussing about the conspiracy, they knew nothing. So they were a bad argument against it all. Okay. Like Jimmy, you said you wanted to ask some questions to get some good answers. So no, no, no question. Yeah. Questions like I've, I've asked questions over, over over time. I'm just saying a basic question, like why would they make such basic errors that the conspiracy theorists claim that they make? Um, the wrong engine parts and these impossible flights and cell phone calls. It's like if they're brilliant enough to sneak explosives in and to set everything up, why would they make such basic errors? Well, you got to look at it the other way. If it was so basic, don't you think people would have picked up on it? Don't you think security in the World Trade Center would have seen a van full of explosives, like a white van or whatever, in the basement? Don't you think they would have picked up on that? Well, I'm saying a little so. Bit more? Well, don't you think they would have seen people loading explosives in to take down the World Trade Center? No, because if you look at the history, a month prior to the World Trade Center being you know, explosions, they actually had the World, the World Trade Center was closed. They closed both towers on two different days. They closed one tower. The one for two days, and they closed the other one for two uh, days. Oh, okay. Employees. All right. All right. Okay. The employees. It was for renovation. All right. I'll I'll, yeah. t I'll I'll buy that. But but do you understand how long it takes to take a regular building and prep it and 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 get it ready for a demo a controlled demolition? 
I do, yeah. It requires a couple of key things. It requires explosives. No, 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 no. Time. I'm talking time-wise. Do you know it takes a little longer than two days? Mm-hmm. And then, and then put the officers back where no one would even right. know that any work was done in those two days. Let me tell you something. I'm getting some uh, work done on the apartment I just bought, and they're just doing a little painting and a little construction crap. And 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 they they're attempting to put it back how it looked before they started, and it's impossible. And this is with just little painting and little construction. There's dust everywhere. Do you know what it takes to to set up for a controlled explosion? How much time it takes? Like w- at Way least more weeks, than if not months, at times. You have to gut the building to get to the the structures, the beams. And pl- uh, drill them. Put sometimes they they and for iron buildings you have to use um, special uh, cutting explosives. Yeah, thermite. Thermite is the main thing. Yeah, thermite, which is a sulfur compound, which uh, is used, which burns at over thirty five. N- no, it's not. It's not even so much that. It's it's a we- it's a wedged shaped piece of iron that cuts through uh, I beams. And, and yeah. th- those would have to be loaded in by the by the hundred for a building of that size. Uh, by the, if not thousands, how is this done when uh, the building was closed for a day or two days? Because there's a couple ways to destroy a building, and the one way they use was they cut the core columns, which will cause the kink in the middle, which we all saw when it falls. That's the most standard way right. to demolish a building. And, and so everyone goes back to work after two days, and they don't notice anything different around their work environment. Nothing. No, they weren't there. That can it can literally. When they came back. After the two days that the buildings were closed, you don't think one one person going to work went, wait a minute, this is not how my desk was set up. Or wait a minute, there's a lot of uh, dust in the area. No, but they didn't have to go into the offices to do anything. The offices weren't involved at all. all now, you get is oh, oh, well, oh, well now that goes, that goes against what everyone said from the videotapes where you see explosives uh, being fired off on floor after floor oh, instead yeah, of it being... Like- I completely agree with you guys. I completely agree with you on that. Loose change. Oh. I mean, it had oh. some good. It had some good points, but a lot of it was ridiculous. Talking about how there was rockets on the planes that shot out before they hit it. Okay, all so that's all, all. that's all ridiculous. No, I completely so, agree. So the so the theory uh, the theory of explosives being planted on every floor was shot to hell. So a new theory was made up that some main master beam uh, that could take the whole building down was uh, uh, demolished, and that brought the building down from the point of where the plane hit uh, all the way down. No, I mean, there wasn't just one main beam. I don't know about that theory. There was six main core columns uh, that if you took them out. N- now, isn't it coincidental? But isn't it coincidental? I with you guys. I know you guys are a long time. I just want to say one thing. There's another movie out there that really explains in a really great detail. It's called Zeitgeist. You can stream oh, it free on yes, Google. It's, it's a it. lot better movie than Loose James right, ever I, was. I've heard about Zeitgeist. Yeah, it's, Let's, it's why can't they just one. name it a little easier than Zeitgeist? Who spells that? Zeitgeist. Yeah. Uh, let's get a German for bullshit. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. I didn't whoa, say whoa, whoa. it. Dan and Philly, what's up? Yo, what's up, boys? We're in a speed round. What do you got? Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, the people that believe this crap are, is what's wrong with this country. I mean, I, I'm just floored by how many people are so incredibly stupid. <clears throat> it's amazing to me. They're probably the same people that call you every day trying to get a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're pro- you're comparing them to prize pigs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're, they're just a bunch of prize pigs All running right. around. And nobody knows nothing. It's it's amazing. All right, thank you, Dan. Let's. Uh, sorry about that. Let's go to Alex in Boston. I, uh, it's a speed round right now. Alex, what's up? Hey, I got a theory about what happened to all those missing people on the plane. Yeah, they're all living on the island now, being chased by the others. Yeah, they're Fucking on. Out. They're on lost. They're on Lost. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, They're just on Lost on an island. Let's go to Keith in uh, Boston. Go Sox, go. Keith, what's up? Uh, nothing much. Maybe they're all on the uh, island with David Copperfield. Um, hey, uh, 9-11 Commission uh, had a report on the History Channel that said that uh, F-16 planes went out to sea after the Pentagon got hit, and uh, they said that uh, they think they went out to sea because uh, of the Russians. Where it may be attacked in the United States. <laughs> hey, uh, Van Halen was playing in Greensboro, North Carolina, <laughs> on uh, September 29th. <laughs> wow! Like, I like that the left turn after somebody makes a comment like that. It's just like, uh, we just sit here thinking for a second. Then, all right, uh, on to the next. I okay. really enjoy the listeners that they they call up with a good point and then, or they think is a good point, whatever. And then you just watch their brain fall apart right in front of their eyes. <laughs> Literally, pieces are just falling out. Yeah, it's just falling apart. Pasquale, Jersey, what's up? 
Hey, how are you? I know you guys got to go. Just uh, the whole theory about uh, the bombs inside the building. I'm a miracle survivor from 9-11. I was actually inside the building when it collapsed. And uh, Are you the one that rode the floor down from uh, the, the, one that rode from the top the and surfed the wreckage down? Remember that rumor? Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's me. I surfed it down. Wait, you really? You were in the building when it started collapsing? I was in the building when the building collapsed. Yep. And, where uh, I where were you? Explosives. Huh? I was on the... Uh, the twenty second floor when the building started to collapse. Well how do you how do you get out? Yeah, everybody always says that and they never listen. I, I was I didn't get out. When the building collapsed I was on the twenty second floor and um, I fell about eighteen floors uh, and I landed on top of what what would be the fourth level of the building after it all collapsed because the pile of wreckage was that high. Were you in a stairwell? I was in a stairwell, yeah, stairway B. Wow. So you're, you're... Well, I kind of have a I kind of have a unique perspective on this, and uh, I was in a '93 bombing when the bomb went off. I was on the 43rd floor. I know exactly what an explosion sounds like and feels like. And uh, when I was inside that building, uh, you know, I'm listening to all these these you know uh, BS guys uh, talking here, and it's, it, it, it's it's total garbage. There was no explosives inside the building. Uh, you know, I just started crumbling from the top, and I uh, dove into a corner and, and just. That prayed that, that that I'd have a quick death. Did you see uh, the? Uh, you, you you're, you're you're claiming you fell 18 floors though, huh? 18 stories and lived. I'm the guy that fell 18 floors and lived and had uh, 80 something plus floors basically fall directly on top of me straight down and somehow passed me by. I ended up on a pile of rubble and uh, I was knocked unconscious when I finally landed and woke up about maybe uh, maybe three hours three hours later um, and was rescued from. Uh, bunch of awesome guys over at uh, Rescue 5 uh, in Staten Island. So you basically kind of just like bumped down almost like you, you, you stayed pretty much on, on whatever you were on. It was just like, doo, 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 it just went down. You didn't actually plunge 18 floors. I mean, you were on something that was falling. Uh, no, I was, I was, uh, I was free falling. I remember m wow. most of it. I, uh, How do you fall 18 like floors and, and, and hit like cement and not uh, Steve from Bayshore said he apparently landed in the marshmallow storage room. <laughs> <laughs> How do you fall onto concrete and and not die? I'm a tough guy. No, uh, no seriously, I uh, it's a miracle. I, I can't explain it myself. The only thing I could possibly say is that when I dove into a corner of the building, I was uh, by a 12 inch standpipe, and maybe that sheltered my fall all the way down. But I was free falling most of the way. All right. Ah, man, we would love to talk to you more, but I there, wasn't yeah. there. There's the music. All right. All right, Pascal. Yeah, no I, just, I just wanted to say, uh, from inside the building, there's definitely no bombs inside the building. I was in there. All right, thank you, sir. And the bottom line is, like, all three of us are very, very uh, skeptical, but nobody wants to say that he's not telling the truth because if he's not, you look like an ass calling out. Right. He yeah. might be telling the truth. I'm I just not, don't know. I'm not going to question those guys. I think he's full of crap. I'm not. Really, you do? No. Uh, Brad, oh, Atlanta, what's say. up? I learned it was wizards that brought down the world trade center. That's right. It was Thumbledore. It was wizardry. All right, guys, we got to get the hell out of here.